بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم can I follow a different madhab or can I follow different madhabs plural uh, based on convenience so the way the question is worded here again allows for some uh, allows for some clarification generally speaking ahlu sunnah wal jamaah holds it as the most beneficial and uh, the biggest recommendation in terms of following a madhab that each muslim should follow one particular madhab predominantly and there are several factors for this every madhab is essentially a uh, a comprehensive interpretation of the quran and the sunnah in the various aspects of one's life to coherently follow the quran and sunnah and not end up contradicting oneself or one's practice you follow one madhab because it systematically interprets the quran and the sunnah according to standard and uh, and sort of uh, standardized principles right usul the reason why we don't follow all of the madhahib all of the time is simply because of the inconvenience that it would cause both in terms of practice as well as in terms of learning right to learn one madhab uh, thoroughly can take an entire lifetime so for the average person to know the rules of all of the madhahib is uh, it's actually quite difficult if at all possible so when it comes to the standard rule we should generally follow one particular madhab this is the way of ahlus sunnah wal jamaah then the second part i'm breaking up the question the second part is can you then follow a different madhab right so there is an extensive answer um that you may find on seekersguidance.org and it actually is titled can i follow another school or madhab when i need to now notice this question is asked differently to the one that was posed the one that was posed said can i follow different madhabs plural um based on convenience this one says when i need to so if it is purely based on convenience as the question is posed then no you cannot follow all the madhabs simply when it is convenient as it is convenient this would uh, technically be what is considered as tatabbu urukhas which is the active pursuit of conveniences or of dispensation so to always look what's the easiest way in this particular masala what's the easiest way in this issue what's the easiest way in that issue and i'll always just follow the easiest way if that's your intention behind following a different madhab that you are deliberately going to pursue these conveniences then this is problematic because two uh, two issues are actually problematic when it comes to following uh, different schools of thought the one is um, the one is essentially inconsistency right you're following one school in this particular rule and then you combine it with a different school's rule and you end up with something that neither schools or any of the schools for that matter agree is valid so you have something that you've concocted that's now invalid this is called talfiq right so it's a form of inconsistency the second problem with following multiple madhahib that is categorized by most scholars as being um, unlawful is this one tatabbu urukhas right so to deliberately pursue conveniences but now this is theoretical in practical uh, life to actually attain tatabbu urukhas one needs to be uh, very well versed in all of the schools of thought so generally speaking even scholars of deen uh, who have specialized in one particular school they don't number one they won't do tatabbu urukhas and number two it would be impractical for them to do so because it means that you have to study every issue and deliberately pursue the easiest route or the most uh, the one that offers the biggest dispensation in every ruling that's quite a tall order so theoretically it's impermissible but from a practical perspective um, it's it's not really something that the average person can do as for changing the question slightly and asking it in the way that we addressed it on seekers guidance answer service can i follow another school when i need to when there's a reason for me to now shafi is normally asked this question when it comes to what breaks my wudu and can i follow the hanafi school or one of the other schools of thought in saying that when i touch my spouse my wudu is not broken that's normally the one that people ask about but assuming that that's not the case and it's some other ruling generally speaking a madhab 
is not a prison, it is a convenience, it is a facilitation to practice the Quran and the Sunnah. We are not duty bound by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no particular ruling that says you must follow this madhab or that madhab or that you must remain uh, loyal to one particular school of thought. Rather, what we are duty bound by is to follow the Quran and the Sunnah. And if you don't have the ability to follow the Quran and the Sunnah directly because you lack the necessary qualities of ijtihad or the qualifications of independent reasoning, then your other option is taqlid, which is to follow the knowledge of a qualified, reliable, trustworthy scholar who provides you with the interpretation of the Qur'an and the Sunnah. And the system of the Ummah was such that we don't follow just the opinions of one particular scholar, but rather a school of thought where hundreds and hundreds of scholars contribute to a single interpretational legacy called a madhab that presents us with the rules of the Qur'an and the Sunnah, the rules of Islam in other words, in a coherent and consistent manner. So this is not a prison, this is a facilitation of practicing deen. If a need arises that calls for you to leave your madhab for whatever reason and adopt another view, whether it be because this other view was, uh, was it's the only view that made it possible for you to practice on, so a necessity, or whether it is because of a convenience, as you put it. Um, there's no necessity in, in adopting a view that says, you know, touching your spouse won't, or rather touching your spouse won't break the wudu. Some say that when you go to Mecca and you perform tawaf and, and, and sa'i, then it's very difficult to follow the Shafi'i school because you're so in, in close proximity with people of the opposite sex that the chances are you're going to break your wudu all the time. So there, um, you may argue that there's a, a need for it. But generally, from day to, on a day-to-day -day basis, there's no need, there's no darura for it. If you have wudu, avoid touching your spouse if you would like to keep your wudu or renew your wudu. But can you follow that opinion anyways, regardless of the fact that it's not a need or it's not something that is essential? And the answer is yes. You may do so as long as you avoid the two rules the two uh, cardinal sins when it comes to following a particular matter, which is to not fall into inconsistencies by chopping and changing the rules of an issue to the point where you end up with something that is not valid by anyone. So, for example, in the Shafi'i school, bleeding does not break the wudu. Under certain circumstances in the Hanafi school, bleeding would break the wudu. In the Shafi'i school, touching the private part of a human being with the insides of one's hands would break the wudu. In the Hanafi school, this rule is not applied as such. In the Shafi'i school, touching one's wife with, uh, with no barrier in between or any member of the opposite sex who is not a mahram would break the wudu. In the Hanafi school, that doesn't apply. So now if you mix and match what breaks the wudu and what does not break the wudu from both madahib and you have wudu, then you bleed profusely and you've touched your private part and you've touched your wife and, you know, a couple of other things as well. And then for the one point you say, well, in this I'm following the Shafi school, in the other I'm following the Hanafi school, in the other I'm following the Maliki school. Number one, this is not going to be something that the average Muslim can do because it requires extensive knowledge. And number two, this is not something that the Muslim is allowed to do because you can see that you'll end up with something that is not valid by any of those madahib and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. So can you follow another madhab for the sake of convenience or for the sake of need? Yes, as long as you don't do so incessantly, deliberately, always looking for the dispensations and as long as you don't mix and match matters so that you end up with something that is not valid by any of the schools that you claim to be following and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. If you have a specific situation and you're worried about uh, these matters that I've alerted you to, then the best thing to do is to consult a scholar on the specific situation where you wish to adopt the opinion of another school. Wallahu subhanahu wa ta'ala a'lam.